If you need a Bible, raise your hand. We'll get one to you. If you need a Bible, raise your hand. We, we have some that we can share with you. Once again, about the blessing of the Lord. The title of my lesson is called Securing the Blessing. Securing the Blessing. The world has a term. They called it um, Securing the Bad. Y'all ever heard somebody say that? You know, my, my young people have heard that before. Securing the Bad. What that means is, is that you, you're doing something to make sure that you get your money. You're doing something, whatever it takes to make sure that what belongs to you comes to you. I want to talk to you today about securing the blessing. My goal, my task, my agenda for today is that when you leave out of here, you will know beyond the shadow of a doubt that God will come through for you. Amen. That's my purpose. That's my, that's my goal in my message today is to let you know so that when you walk out of those doors today, you know beyond the shadow of a doubt, there's no doubt whatsoever in your heart or in your mind that God will deliver, God will come through, God will heal, God will rescue, whatever it is that you are in need of, I want you to leave here today knowing of a surety that God will manifest his power on your behalf. Mm -hmm. I want to erase all doubt, all concern, all ifs, so that you will be fully persuaded. That's what Paul says. He said, I'm fully persuaded, and I want you to be fully persuaded that your God who is well able will do it for you. A lot of people believe that God is able. A lot of uh, people believe that he has the power, he has the ability, but somehow when it comes down to believing that he will use that power and ability on your behalf, sometimes that's where the short circuit is. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to not just know that God is able, but that he's also willing and that he desires to do it for you. Mm -hmm. And that your faith is the key that causes the will of God and the power of God to be released into your life. Now, I want to show you once again, I'm talking to you uh, primarily about the blessing. I'm going to tell you what the blessing is. Let's go to the book of Genesis. We're going to go to the beginning. Go to the book of Genesis, the first chapter. And we're going to take a walk through the scripture. You're going to have to follow me today because I'm going to give you a lot of scripture. If you're taking notes, it's a good day to take notes. Once I finish with this message, I'm going to give, um, not this Sunday, but maybe next Sunday, give you, the, give you my notes. I'm going to give you my notes so that you will have them because I want you to be able to read over them and go back over this message. <clears throat> but once again, we're talking about securing the blessing, locking it down. We want to lock it down. We want to, we want to tighten it down. You know what it means to secure something that, that uh, like the hurricane is coming, you want to go out and secure anything that's in the yard so they don't get blown away. You know, you got something that's important, something that's valuable. You don't just leave it hanging around, leave it all over the place. You secure it. You lock it down so that it don't get missing, so that it don't get lost. And so that's what I want to talk to you today. That's the mindset that I want you to have. We're gonna secure the blessing. We're gonna, we're gonna, today we're gonna lock it down. We're gonna make sure that we know, that we understand where it is, what it is, and exactly what God is gonna do on the behalf of his people. All right, now the book of Genesis, the first chapter, go down to verse number 26. Genesis chapter number one, verse number 26 says, and God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. 
So God created man in his image, and in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Verse number 28. And God blessed them. What did God do? Yes. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. The reason why I took you to the book of Genesis, which is the book of beginnings, is because I wanted you to see the original purpose of God for man. I wanted you to see the original intent, the original purpose for man before sin got involved. God said we're going to make man in our image, we're going to make man like us. He's not going to just be um, in the image, the physical outline of us, but he's going to be made like us in spirit. He's going to conduct himself, he's going to live, move like us. He says, and, he, and man will have dominion. He said, we're going to bless man. Bless. What does it mean to bless? To bless means to supernaturally empower, to supernaturally give ability to, to make it prosperous, to make it successful, to give it the ability to be victorious. The blessing of God gives you the ability to win the battle. The blessing of God is the favor of God. It is the hand of God or the power of God that is working in your behalf. The blessing of God is God's empowerment. This is very important. Uh, the reason why I'm taking you to the beginning is so that you will see what God's plan was, what his purpose was, what his intent was, so that you can see how you fit in the scheme. This is very important. The original plan of God was that man would be blessed, that man would be favored, that man would be empowered, that man would be prosperous. That's why God made man. He did not make man to lose. He did not make man to be victims. He did not make man to be poor. He did not make man to be sick and defeated. He made us in his own image. He made us in his own likeness. He made us to be victorious. He made us to be conquerors. When Adam sinned, a whole lot of stuff got involved that God never wanted to be involved. When sin came, the struggle came. When sin came, the problems came. When sin came, disease came. When sin came, sickness came. All of these things came as the direct effect of sin. It was never God's intention for man to go through the things that men are going through, but it was the decision of a man who brought on what we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. This is very important. So I say, why God uh, uh, allowed this to happen, allowed it, that was never the plan of God. God did not make the world in the condition that it is in right now. Man did this. God told Adam what would happen if he ate of the tree, and Adam ate of the tree anyway. It was not the will of God for, for man to be this. This is what man became because he chose to go against the word of God. Yes, yeah. All right. So the first mention of the blessing is in the garden where God blessed man, empowered man, made man successful, gave man authority and dominion and released him in the garden that he might rule the garden and might spread the garden throughout the whole world. That's the first mention of the blessing. Now, the second mention of the blessing, go to the book of Genesis. Uh, 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 matter of fact, yeah, Genesis, the 12th chapter. The 12th chapter of Genesis. We're gonna look at the second mention of the blessing. Genesis 12 and 1. Now between Genesis 1 and Genesis 12, a whole lot of stuff happened. A whole lot of bad stuff happened. That's when Adam ate, the, uh, ate of the tree. That's when sin got involved. That's when Cain rose up and slew his brother. Uh, that's when murder entered into the earth. Uh, lying and stealing and all kinds of stuff entered into the earth. Uh, uh, it was never God's plan. I told y'all, we mentioned this before, how God made the world. He made this world in a way that everything you needed, this world could supply you. There's enough food in this world that nobody should be hungry. There's enough food in this world that nobody should be hungry. There's enough land in this world that everybody should have a place. The reason why we don't have everybody having sufficient food is because we got a lot of crooked people in high places. But it was not the will of God. God made enough for everybody. God made plenty for everybody. But we, man, man is the problem. God was not the problem. Man is the problem. We do it to each other. 
So we can't point the finger at God because it's what we are doing to each other. One man hurts another man. One man steals from another man. One man betrays or commits fraud or whatever up to another man. And you can't look at God and say, why does this? No, no. Man, we do. We make the bones. We make this. We make that. So it's not what God is doing, it's what we are doing. Now when we get saved, our heart changes. And so we now use our gifts and abilities not to do wrong, but to do right. And to do good to the world, or bring good into the world instead of bringing wrong or bad into the world. But all of the bad that's coming into the world is being released by me. That's why salvation is so important because when you get saved, your heart get changed. You can't expect somebody who, who doesn't have a changed heart to do right. Amen. They're going to do wrong because the heart is wrong. But once the heart is changed, now you expect us to do right. You expect me to do right because I say I've been changed. I've given my life to Christ. And so once there's a change in my life, once my heart has been changed, then my actions change. Now in this particular place, we, we find God calling out Abraham. Y'all got Genesis 12 chapter. All right, go down to verse number um, Go to verse number 1, Genesis 12 and 1. It says, Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make thee a great nation. This is the promise of God. I will make you a great nation. Great nation talks about a great people, a great race of people. That's what he's talking about. I will make you a great race of people, and I will bless thee. That's the blessing again. I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Not only am I going to bless you, but I'm going to bless you so good that you're going to be a blessing. This is very important. you got to understand the purpose of the blessing. You have been blessed by God, and I'm going to show you this, but you need to know why you've been blessed by God. You have been blessed by God so that you might be a blessing. You have been blessed by God so that you might be a blessing. You are the light of the world. You are the one that's going to bring about change in the world. You are the one that's going to be a blessing to the people of this world. God has blessed you, not just so that you can sit around and say, oh, I'm blessed, but that you might be motivated to be a blessing to somebody else. You can't help nobody if you messed up. Amen. You can't help no nobody until you get yourself out of the hole. Right. Once you get yourself out of the hole, now you can reach back to the hole and help somebody out. See, this is why it's so important for you to get the mindset of being blessed. You have to be blessed conscious. Mm -hmm. You have to be aware of the blessing that you are. You have to be aware of the blessing that is on you. Why? Because God wants to use you to be a blessing to somebody. God wants you to be a blessing to somebody. There are people who are in trouble that are waiting for you to rise up and take your place as a child of God. There are people who are going to be saved because they came in contact with you. There are families that are going to be made better because they came in contact with you. There are marriages that are going to be made better because they came in contact with you. There are children that are going to be made better because they came in contact with you. You are a very important part of the program. Yes. Amen. You are irreplaceable. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. Mm -hmm. You are irreplaceable. You are a pivotal part of the organization. You cannot be replaced. He needs you. Mm -hmm. Anything God is going to do in the world, he's going to do it through one of us. Mm -hmm. Anything God is going to do in this world, he's going to do it through one of us. He's going to use your hand. He's going to use your feet. He's going to use your mouth. He's going to use your bank account. He's going to use the gift or the talent that he has put in you. Everything that God is going to do, he's going to do it through one of us. He uses us to be a blessing to the world. You must understand who you are. You've got to get out of this me only mindset and recognize who God has made you to be. You are the light of the world. You are a blessing. You are a leader, not a follower. All right. Amen. You are a trendsetter, not a trend follower. All right. That's who you are. And until you understand who you are, you will live in a way that does not come up to the standard of who God has made you. Mm -hmm. But once you understand who you are, then you begin to move and act differently. God told Abraham, he says, get away from your dad and stop following him and follow me. Yes. And I will make you a blessing to all nations. He says, I will bless you and I will make you a blessing. He says, I will make your name great. Yes. God said, I will make your name great. People all around will know who you are because I'm going to use you 
to do my work in the earth. This is the second mention of the blessing. He says, I'm going to make your name great. He says, I will bless thee. Uh, uh, verse number two says, I will make thy name great. I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. I'm going to bless you, Corey. I'm going to bless you, son, and I'm going to make you a blessing. And I'm going to make your name great. This is very important. Verse number three, and I will bless them that bless thee. I will bless everybody who bless you. And he says, I'll curse everybody who curse you. I don't have to fight for myself anymore. Because God will fight for me. Yes. God says, I will bless everybody who blesses you, and I will curse everybody who curse you. Don't worry about who's talking about you. Don't worry about who don't like you. Don't worry about who got something negative to say about you. The only thing you got to do is understand who you are in Christ and understand the favor of God is on your life. Go ahead and let him curse you. God said, I got your back. I will curse everyone who curses you. It's to their benefit that they bless you. Yes. Amen. successful yes. because I'm with you. My blessing is on you. My favor is with you. Yes. You can do what others can't do. There are other people who have more than you and still can't do what you do because I have blessed you. I have favored you. Mm -hmm. The last part of verse number three says, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. That's what I thought. I told you earlier. Everybody around you is going to do better because you're there. Yes. Everybody that's connected to you is going to do better because you're there. Your manifestation of something you are not conscious of. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you're, if you're going to have an expectation of the blessing, you have to be conscious of the blessing. But if you're living your life unaware of who you are, if you're living your life unaware of what you carry, if you're living your life unaware of what God has given you, then you have no expectation. You have no expectation to see a manifestation. Let me, let, you know, one of the baby, I don't see it right now, but one, one of the, um, yeah. She had a dress on, new dress. And as soon as she came into the church, she came up to me and said, look at my dress. <laughs> the first thing she said was, look at my dress. See. Ooh. When you know what you're covered in mm -hmm. is beautiful, yeah. then you're always ready to show it off. All right. 